I am Mark Ludwig, and I am the Director of Music and Organist here at St. Mary. And I am here to give you a little tour of our pipe organ. So I'm going to start off by showing you some things that most of you do not know exist. So the pipe organ is somewhat like a human body. It operates off of air. And so it has, I guess, what we call lungs. So I am in the basement underneath the pipes and this is kind of what makes the pipe organ work. So, I'm going to show you a couple little things here. First of all, the pipe organ works with wind, and we have to have something that generates the wind. And right down here, I'm gonna move my camera, I will show you, there is something called a blower. Now the blower, if you can see it, is a huge fan, which creates a lot of air. And if you follow this up, all the way up to there, it goes into what is called a reservoir. Now a reservoir is what holds the air until I play a note on the organ and a little gizmo, I guess, releases the air, which lets it go through the pipe. So as you can see, we have the, the reservoir here and then we have another pipe from this reservoir to this reservoir. And that operates just one side of the organ. If we move all the way, we look here, you can kind of guess where we are. I am looking currently right now at where the tabernacle would be. And so we still have to get wind from this side of the organ to that side of the organ. We have this massive pipe right here, which is connected again to the reservoir. It goes all the way down. And as you can see, it's like a little tunnel there. It goes onto the other side of the organ, which supplies air for that part. You can also see that there's a larger one right there. that helps provide air for the pipes over there. So this is just a little view of a room that I guess many of you didn't know existed. But it's vital for the pipe organ in order for it to work. I'm gonna show you one last little thing here. It's a lever up there. You see that there's a rope with a pulley. And I'll get back to you on that, explain what that does when I climb up the stairs, or actually climb up the ladder here, and show you the rest of the organ. So right now, I'm currently behind what is called the choir box, and I'll talk about that later. And as you can see, there's a huge computer switchboard, I guess, which controls which pipes are being played at a certain time. Okay, now you can see where I'm standing in regards to the church. If you look right there, you should see the baptismal font. And I am standing on, like I said earlier, the choir chamber. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. Again, we have the pipe that's going into this big box here, which is known as the reservoir which then powers each one of these little pipes. Now, I believe there are about 2,000 pipes with this organ, which actually, believe it or not, is not a very large instrument. And when I have the organ tuned, the tuner has to go through and tune each one of these pipes. And if you look real close, you can see that it tells you which pipe pitch it is. So this is C sharp, number 26. This is D, number 29. And if you look behind here, you see that there's a hole, and that's called the mouth. And so when the air comes up, it comes through that hole, which then produces the sound. And I'm gonna be very careful and walk across here and show you 
hopefully, some more, some more parts of the organ. You see that we have some tubes down there. Those tubes again connect to each one of these pipes, the gold pipes, which allows then for the organ to have sound. And if you look inside these pipes, you see it says D6, D4. It's telling you which pitch they are on the organ. Okay, now I'm going to try to squeeze back here to show you what is known as the choir chamber. Now chamber is just a fancy word for a room. And if you look in there, you can see that there's all kinds of different shapes of pipes. You have these funny looking ones that look like, um, well, actually they kind of sound like a reed, which is like a trumpet sound. Then you have some wooden pipes. You have some more metal pipes. And each one of those shapes produces a different kind of sound. Now, why do we call this a chamber? Well, because on a pipe organ, you can't control the sound. I'm sorry, you can't control the volume unless it's in a room specifically made to hold pipes. So if you look at this, I'm using this using my hand, I can close what's known as shades, which then controls the volume of how loud the organ is. So right now on this side of the organ, it's as loud, loudest, it's as loud as it can be. But then when I close it, close these shades here, all the way, it's as soft as it can be. Okay, now I'm being very adventurous and I am climbing over into the swell section of the organ. Now, so you know where I'm at, you can see that this is the separate side of the organ. And here we have the actual largest pipes on the organ. The larger the pipe, the deeper the sound. And look how big that mouth is down there. Remember earlier I talked about the, the pulley right here? So there's another pulley here, which then controls, as I just talked about, the shades inside the box. Now over on this side, I called it the choir box. On this side, it's called the swell box. And now I'm gonna to try to climb up there to show you some pipes inside of the swell box. Okay, now I am standing inside of the swell box. As you can see, it's kind of a tight fit. When the tuner comes, like I said, he has to come through and tune every one of these pipes. I'm not quite sure that there's a light in here so you can see them, but you can see that these pipes, unlike these pipes, have a cap on top of them with some felt. Again, that makes a different sound. And you can see back here how big these pipes are. And maybe I can get a good view or a good shot of what the, where I am in the church. And you can see the shades, which again, control the volume. Unlike the choir side of the organ, the swell area actually has two boxes. And I'm not gonna be able to climb back in there but you can see that there's a box here, which houses different kinds of pipes in different shapes, and the other box that I was just in up there. And again, you can see the pulley. I'll see if I can pull it here, which then opens and closes. Sorry, could you say that again? Sorry, that was my watch, <laughs> which then opens and closes the shades on the small box. So now that I've given you kind of a view of the inside of the organ, I'm going to actually show you a little bit 
about the console. Now the console is this big thing right here. A lot of people call this the organ, but it's actually called a console. And these things right here are called stops. And stops, make sure you can see them, stops control which sounds come on and which sounds go off. So if I want the pipes, the gold pipes to play, I have to pull out something called a principal eight. And the principal eight controls the big pipes that you can see. And here I'll play a chord. Okay. Now remember I talked about some of the funny shaped pipes? The one that sounded like a trumpet? This is actually called in technical terms, it's called a crumb horn. And I'm gonna play that. And if you remember, it was located inside of the choir chamber. Now, I keep on talking about these chambers and you can see that there are three keyboards. Well, each keyboard controls a different part of the organ. So this keyboard right here, the bottom keyboard, controls the choir chamber. This keyboard right here controls what's called the grate. And the grate are the pipes that you can see. They're not in any kind of box. They're the gold pipes and the pipes that were sitting on top of the choir box. And then up here, this, which is called a manual, is called, or is the swell keyboard. And it controls the pipes inside of the swell box. Now, if I want to do, which I do a lot, I can make this manual and this manual be played on this manual. It's called coupling. So I'll show you. I have this sound, but then I want to add that crumb horn. I can push a tab up here, and I've added the crumb horn to this keyboard. But if I play it down there, you can hear it. It's just the crumb horn. And up here is the crumb horn and the principal. Now I can do the same thing over here. And this is actually called a trumpet that I'm going to use. And this is on the swell. And it tells out, out of tune. And I can couple that down to the grate. So those are some stops that we have. You can see that there are a lot of different stops on this organ. I didn't really go into it, but the organ is pipe and it's also digital. And so there are some digital sounds on here, but we'll save that for another time. Now I'm going to show you some pedal stuff. Now down here, we'll get a view. You can see I have these things that go up and down. These things right here are what control those shades that I talked about that control the volume of the organ. So if I push that one all the way down, it closes the shade on the swell side of the organ. If I push that one down, it controls the shades on the choir side of the organ. So I'll give you a demonstration. Here's our trumpet, but I wanna make it softer. You hear how soft it went? And if we look over here, we have the choir side. Here's our crumb horn. But I wanna make it softer. I'm gonna close that. You can hear the different kinds of volume that happens by closing those shades and opening them. Now this pedal right here, which I really never use, is a crescendo pedal. And what it does is just keep on adding sounds. So if I pull it up, you can hear how the organ got louder. It's because it keeps on adding more and more sounds to it. Now, a lot of people ask me what this board is down here, the pedal board. 
Well, think about the pedal board as being like one of the keyboards. I just happen to use it for my feet. So before I can play the pedals, I have to put on what are called, but not, the ver not very pretty looking, organ shoes. And as you can see, they're different than regular kinds of shoes. There's the leather on the bottom, and then there's a higher heel. It lets my feet go back and forth pretty quickly on the pedal board for when I'm playing fast. Pieces of music. I like to wear crazy socks because these shoes are so ugly. So right now I'm just going to play a little bit of a variation called Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. I'm gonna play probably the first eight measures of each variation so you can see and hear what the pedal keyboard or pedal board can do by itself. So here's the beginning melody. Okay, then I'm going to play variation number one. This is what it's going to sound like. You can kind of hear the melody still. that time that I use both my feet together and again here's another variation of the same melody and you can see that I will again be using two feet at the same time to play two notes in one foot. Now here's variation number three. It's a little bit louder. It's a little bit more tricky. in that. Here's another variation. And here is variation number five. And I'm going to use that one stop that we talked about beforehand called the crumb horn. So then here's the last variation, which is a very big sound. This concludes our tour of the organ here at St. Mary. I hope you found it to be interesting. There's a lot of parts and I didn't go through every single thing. Um, it would take several hours to do that. But I hope you had a great year with religious education and I hope you have a great summer. And may God bless you and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Take care.